Well, hello, this is Kelly, and I'm the Mathematic Plumber, and welcome to part three of waterline sizing. Today, we're going to focus on the actual sizing of the pipe and some pressure calculations. And once again, we are using the National Plumbing Code of Canada to do the waterline sizing here, and you're going to notice that when it comes to waterline sizing, everything is in metric, including the pressures. So the length of water pipe will be in meters, and the pressures will be in kPa. Let's look at the water service pipe first. Water service pipe travels between the water main and the main building shutoff. There is 550 kPa at the main, but we will travel up by one meter, meaning we're going to lose a little bit of pressure from that. Now for kPa, every meter of water we travel up, we lose 9.81 kPa. But for water line sizing, we simplify that number to 10. So we will have 10 kPa for every one meter of vertical rise. So let's take that one meter of rise multiply that by 10, and we have a pressure loss of 10 kPa. So 550 kPa at the main minus 10 kPa equals 540 kPa that we're going to use for a waterline sizing. Before we can do any sizing, we need to calculate up the total hydraulic load of the building. Now, the fixtures are not labeled as to what size they are here, so we're going to choose the smallest sizes available on our fixture unit table. Example, the water closets will be six liters per flush or less. So we get to add them all up, every single one, including the three hose bibs that are down in the basement. Now you will notice that one of those hose bibs is hot only. Well, when we size up the water service pipe, we need to size in the hot only fixtures as well, which would include that hose bib or dishwasher if we had one. You will get 224.1 fixture units if you've added it up correctly. Don't forget that one urinal on the first floor that is a flush valve urinal as well. Now we need you to turn in your plumbing code way near the back. Section A-26312. And you're going to find three tables. They're going to look like this. We should be looking at table A26312-A. Now there's three little segments and it's broken down into pressures or pressure ranges. The smallest one is pressure range 200 to 310 kPa. The next one is 311 to 413 kPa. And the last one are pressures over 413 kPa. We need to select the right one. From our example earlier, we have a pressure of 540 kPa. So we should be using pressures over 413 kPa. First column that we see on the left hand side is water service pipe in inches. That is what we're going to use to size our water service pipe. The next one, water distribution system in inches. That's for sizing the water piping that's inside the building. And then we have a whole bunch of numbers going across the top, which are maximum allowable length in meters. The water line sizing table we should be looking at is pressures over 413 kPa. And for the developed length, we've got 11 meters that we need to factor in for. Now, if we look at the table right at the top, we can have a maximum allowable length of 12 meter in the very first sizing column. Now, these numbers as we go down are fixture unit loads. So we need to travel down within our table here until we see something that will provide adequately for 224.1 fixture units. Now, it goes for quite a jump here. 151 for inch and a half, and all of a sudden, 359 fixture units at two inch. So that's what we're going to have to choose because there is not a smaller option for us. It is time to size up the distribution piping, that is the water piping within the building. But we need to do one more pressure calculation. We had 540 kPa at the building isolation valve, and now we need to go up a further 11 meters. So we need to do the math for that now. So we're going to take 11 meters and multiply that by 10 kPa per meter, which is 110 kPa. 540 kPa minus 110 equals 430 kPa. Well, I'm looking at my tables. I still need to be in the pressures over 413 kPa. At this point, you need to go and add up your hydraulic load or your fixed unit load for all the different portions of piping throughout the system. 
I like to do hot water first when I'm doing distribution sizing because it's easier. Let's look at pipe O. That's that hot water pipe that is coming out of the hot water tank. In order to size this up, I need to add up all the hot fixtures in the building, which equals 63.5 fixture units. I will notice if I look at the bottom left of the picture, 60 meters to furthest fixture from building isolation. So that will be my maximum allowable length of 60 meters. Well, if I look along the top, I see, oh, there's a slot for 61. So I come down and I come down the list until I get to the distribution size of one and a quarter. That is good for 74 fixture units with a 61 meter maximum allowable length. Inch and a quarter, it is. And now for an easy one, pipe V on the hot. Well, pipe V has a bathtub and a lab that was six fixture units. Well, once again, I come down on the maximum allowable length of 61. And if I come down to the list, I notice that 5 8 distribution pipe will do up to eight fixture units. Well, I only have six. 5 8 it is. So I'm going to go through and size every single pipe using this system. Eventually, I'm going to size up my cold water side. Now the cold water side, it's pretty simple. For example, pipe A, we already know it's 224.1 fixture units. We already figured that out. So let's go look in our table. It's the same developed length, down at 61 meters of maximum allowable length. And we're going to notice that we get to 2 inch on our distribution, which is once again 359 fixed units according to the table. So that's perfectly adequate. Another example would be pipe N near the top there. Well, we're serving a water closet, a bathtub, and a lav. You add those up, you get 8.2 fixed units. Once again, I come down my table at 61 meters of developed length, and I'm looking for 8.2. Well, I don't get it at 5 eighths. That's only good for eight, but I can go down to three quarter and that's good to 13 fixture units. So three quarter it is. I'm not gonna go and call this system difficult to do. It's tedious and time consuming. But if you don't size up the water system properly, you're gonna have other issues like lack of volume in the system. So just do it right. You have yourself a great day.